Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of this Cataclysm game. This is turn number 5, 1941 to 42. I am Bridger, and I'll be walking you through again this solitaire game that I'm playing through. Uh, I did have one issue from turn number 4 that we need to correct. going to try and retcon a little bit. Uh, the... Japanese attack on California in turn four, as was rightly pointed out by one of the commenters in that video, was not a legal move. California is a remote area. U.S. units only are allowed there, and I knew that, but I forgot that that also applies to any operations. So it is impossible to actually attack California uh, for the Japanese. So what I had to do was give the Americans back their subs. I had to give the Americans back two points worth of fleets, which I actually gave to them on their uh, holding box, assuming they would have built that with an offensive last turn uh, instead of flipping the uh, unit back um, that was mistakenly taken away from them. So, that having been taken uh, care of, let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, in this game, the... S the score is very clear. The fascists are winning by, like, crazy right now. It's 28 for the fascists, uh, 4 for the communists, and negative 3 for the democracies. So, yeah, uh, they're going to have to turn that around. Good news, though, they have three turns to do it, and the Americans have basically fully woken up here. So, let's jump straight into it. And I, by the way, forgot to... Uh, put this back here. I was messing around with these earlier. The Yugoslavian resource was on here at the very beginning. The, the Italians grabbed it last time, and so they're going to be spending it this time. So, let's start with gaining flags. The Germans gain two flags. The Italians gain Il Duce. The Japanese gain one flag. The United Kingdom gains a flag, and the Americans gain a flag. Okay. Now, uh, Il Duce, the, the, the Italians, uh, gain two resources total, including the Yugoslavian resource, which they are burning right now, uh, and they get one free war offensive, worth remembering that one, because they own Lombardy, and they are at war, and then they have those two resources to spend. Well, one of them is actually going to be spent on this carrier upgrade, uh, they get two builds for each resource, and then the other one is going to turn into an offensive. Next, we go to the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union gets one, two, three free war offensives. One, two, three. Then, the total resources they are collecting, one, two, three, four, and the remaining resource is five. They do ask the United States for some lend-lease over through the maritime territories from California, and the Americans consider it, and no, no, the Soviets are doing well enough at this point. They're not worried about the Soviets collapsing before the Americans can jump in. If the Soviets start doing more poorly, then they might send some aid over there. But for now, the Soviets are just going to have to make do with one, two, three, four, five resources, which converts into 15 total builds for them, with offensives costing three. So, we know that the Soviets are probably going to want to put a lot of offensives in there. So then, if we're counting down from 15, we go 12, 9, hmm. And if we do one more, that gets us down to six builds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six. Let's put some more air units. Air units tend to take higher casualties for some reason, because it's hard to get. Well, we're going to have flipped over land units, because we've got two tank upgrades in that stack um, for the Soviets here. And, yeah, that looks good. So they built six units and then spent the other uh, nine uh, resources as... Uh, or, sorry, well, nine builds, three resources as offensives. Okay. Next, we go to the Japanese. Now, the Japanese have... They're starved. They've got the Tokyo resource, the Manchuria resource, and Jiangsu that they didn't spend last turn. They are at uh, total war, which is good for them. They gain one war offensive for Tokyo. Then they have to spend the Jiangsu resource, so they're collecting a total of three this turn. They're going to go one, two... And then they need land units. They only have one land unit on the whole map, and they need to try to take Java and or India this turn to try to reopen up their uh, income. So they took two offensives. The last resource is going to convert into three builds because they're at total war. One uh, infantry army and two, three, four, a tank uh, upgrade. Okay, 
So that's the Japanese. Now we get the Americans and the British. Well, the British are going to be real freaking easy because the Germans completely sealed them off from their colonies and from aid from the U.S. for this turn, uh, which is the historical result of the uh, battle for the Atlantic. At least the Mediterranean would normally be closed to them, and it is indeed. Uh, but they can't even collect Canada thanks to these subs. So the Brits have one war offensive. Uh, and then they get one build from London at two, or one resource from London at two, um, at two total offensives. Oh, you know what? Germany actually should be in the two effectiveness. They should go before the British, but we'll jump back down to them in a second. I forgot they went to total war, and they should have lost their uh, effectiveness down to two. So the British gained their war offensive. Now they have two builds. What are they going to build? Well, on the map... They have decent troops on the map. Really what they need is offensives, I think. So I think they're just going to take another offensive. If not least of which because hopefully they can get to total war and then the offensives will be able to be used as build, but three builds instead of two each. They need it. They do have one unit down here in, in uh, Burma, which is actually cut off from uh, supply. Uh, unfortunately, so that means if the Japanese attack it, it's pretty weak. It's at a minus one. So yeah, the uh, they're going to take that second offensive, and that's it. That's all they get. Poor, poor Brits. All right, the Americans, on the other hand, they're going to collect seven. They can't collect the Java resource because they can't trace a line of communication there because they lost Hawaii. Remember, lines of communication have to go through sea areas that are within two areas of a friendly port, which means the Aleutian Islands could support out to Midway, but they can't get any further. Once they get here, this is not within two sea areas of a friendly port. Neither is this, neither is this. Uh, you can see American Samoa down here would get you up to the Gilbert Islands, but this is the point at which the Americans can't get any further uh, because they can't trace through those sea zones, which are three three spaces away from a friendly port. So they can't collect the Java resource and all those units in Java and um, the Philippines are out of supply. So that having been said, the Americans are going to collect their standard seven, four from the Washington, D.C., and three from California. But per the rules, you can only collect resources if you have resource markers. They're on the back of the offensives. Uh, and the Americans only have uh, six Offensive markers currently in their available pool. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, they have seven. They can collect all of them. I'm My mistake. Um, and so what that says to me is now they have to figure out how they're going to spend it. Well, we know they're going to get four war offensives, right? One, two, three, four. Okay, good. Now... They get to collect seven resources times two is the conversion rate. So they get 14 builds and offensives cost them two. So if we go 12, 10, 8. Now they've got all, if I can do it, here we go. Now they've got all their offensives out. Um, they could pull one more back and build it. But I think we're going to convert the other, uh, the other resources into builds. So they have eight left. And it might as well be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they took two infantry, two planes, an armor upgrade, and a carrier upgrade. Or sorry, and um, strategic air upgrade. That's a decent balanced mixed force, and if they want to build more of these things in their force pool, they can do it later with those offensives, and hopefully those offensives will be worth three when they get to total war. All right, so that all having been said, how are we going to reserve this? Well, we have to go back and do Germany. We forgot to do Germany because their effectiveness is now two. They should have been earlier, but we're solitaire, so we know what we're going to do anyway, don't we? Germany collects, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four... Five, including the Polish resource. Wow, only five for Germany. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they wish they had more than that. Um, and they do have enough offensives to collect that much. So we're burning the Polish resource right now. Uh, that's that plus the two there plus Paris and Provence. So the Polish resource is gone, but it is an industrial resource. So the Germans get the Polish, Berlin, Ruhr, and Paris. That is four war offensives. One, two, three. 
three, four. And I think they probably want all three of these as well. Did they have one in the cup? They had one in the cup. That's why. They want all eight offensives out if they can do it. So we know they're getting five. So here is, um, let's see, five times three is 15, and each offensive costs three. So that's 12, nine, six left. What are they going to spend those six on? A fortress wouldn't be bad. We could put it in Benelux. It would give us the Atlantic Wall rebuilt here for us, just in case the Americans try to come in early. Uh, we know that the fortress is going to take a long time, so let's spend it. That's one. We're counting up to six. Uh, they have two tanks. Let's do two, three, Four, five. Mm. Hang on. We're going to pull one of those air back. Oh, they lost all their air. They have to have it. And then a logistics base? Are they going to go into Russia here? Try to collapse them? Or at least neuter them? Are they going to try to go for... I think they're going to try to hold out, honestly. I think they're going to try to just play defense. The Soviets, unless an opportunity prevents it presents itself, right? Because the Soviets are currently at stable. Trying to collapse the Soviets from stable, very difficult. If the Soviets lose their uh, their home front test and fail their propaganda, then the Germans might have a chance at collapsing the Soviet Union and ending the game early. If they don't have that chance, they got to be very careful. So what are they going to do with this logistics base if they do something with it? I don't think they want that. I think they want another air unit. Or another land army. How many land armies do they have? They got none. Let's put one more land army in there. Okay, so that's the last resource. That's six. All right, that's everybody. Everybody's done. Now we start at the bottom and work our way up. What is Italy doing? Italy is probably going to reserve Il Duce so that he can spend him again. But man, everybody wants to save their flag now because now you have to play the long game. Maybe Italy tries to take Romania? That wouldn't be great. They can't make as much of a use out of it as the Germans can. But maybe what the Italians do is they take an early uh, offensive and they try to knock out the uh, American subs in the Western Mediterranean. I mean, they conquered all the Middle East, right? That's great and all. But what are they going to do next? And what can they do first? I mean, they're going to go last because they're low effectiveness. I think they're going to reserve one of their offensives and use it to crush the American fleet. Uh, not a fleet, sub pack. They can try to knock out the British base at Gibraltar. Man, what they really need to do is invade French North Africa. I wasn't thinking about it now, but yeah, if they get French North Africa, that gives them a port on the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, and they can head out and try to do some stuff in here. Because they've already knocked out the British coming in through Egypt. I mean, they could theoretically go from South Africa to the Arabian Sea to Egypt. It would be an invasion. The... The Italians could worry about that later. But for now, I think an invasion of French North Africa wouldn't be out of line. It prevents the British from doing it. One, two, three. It would be an extended range invasion across two sea zones. But the British and the Americans could get to French North Africa and from there do some more stuff in here. And if, this German, if the Italians have a base in French North Africa, they can hit Gibraltar without being at extended range for one, two, three to hit it. Yeah, I think that's what they want to do. They want to put that offensive in reserve. What do they want to put in? They're going to put the air unit in reserve. They want that to come out so they have extra uses. Nope. Man, I'm very indecisive. I'm sorry, guys. I think they have to put... The fleet upgrade. It's the only thing we don't care if it comes out later. Ideally, the Italian home front comes out and it lets us move everything around in position. But if the offensives come out early, that's fine too. Italy is not crucial here. I don't care when their units come out that much. But the Soviets, oh boy, Soviets have a very difficult choice. They have a lot of stuff they could pull. But I think a fortress might make the biggest sense here. But at the same time, those tank upgrades are very good, and if they're stuck at the bottom of the cup, you're screwed. You can't even rebuild them. So we're definitely putting a tank upgrade. The number of times I've been screwed by not putting a tank upgrade in reserve. Uh, it's too high. Uh, so now the Japanese are going to reserve 
the infantry army. Why? Because if their tank army comes out, if their tank upgrade comes out, and they don't have the infantry army on the map, they've got a problem. So they're going to reserve the infantry army. It's not what they want to do. Ideally, they want those offensives. They want to do stuff with those. But we do need to get the infantry army out first so that the tank army has something to upgrade when it does come out. All right. Next, we go to Germany. Germany's got a lot of things on their plate. I think an offensive wouldn't be out of line here for them. It would also allow them to build up more tank armies if they wanted to early, but the air unit. Damn, they need the air unit in Poland, or they're super vulnerable. So yeah, we got to take the air unit and put that in reserve. There's a lot of things we'd love to do, but the air unit in Poland is necessary. Otherwise, they could face some dangers from... They see the Soviets, got that tank, they could have tank parity in Poland if they're not careful, and if the Soviets have air superiority, that's a big buff. All right, so the British have very little to do, but they definitely want to use their, uh, their, their, their fleets here to try to knock out the German subs as quickly as possible. The other thing they have to worry about is this German fleets are close to taking out the United Kingdom, but um, once the uh, once the subs are taken care of, the Americans can come over and help garrison the UK and Scotland and make sure that that's all taken care of. So the Brits are going to put a flag first. They're going to go to total war. They're not going to wait. They get increase in the number of dice they roll. Uh, oh, they, well, they have three dice when they roll. So they don't, they're not as scared of total war as the other countries are. The Americans, I think, are actually going to do exactly the same thing. These guys are both trying to get to total war. They want their offensives to count for more. It lets them build more things and use more augmentations. So there we go. That's everybody. They're in. Uh, they're set up. So now we send everything to the Action Cup. 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 Okay, so uh, we also have everything else in there, it looks like. Uh, from the previous thing, including all of the home fronts, including the French home front, which we should pull out of there and get rid of, so we don't have to worry about that coming out. All right, let's start the turn. Sorry for the long delay, but this is a big, important turn. The Americans will interrupt an attempt to go to total war. Three dice is the number... Oh, sorry, they're on maneuvers. Do they want maneuvers? At this point, what would they use it for? I think they'd use it for a build, but I think we're throwing it away. We're going to throw away those maneuvers... And instead, we're going straight for total war with the Americans. No fear. They got it. They're going to total war. That lets them put the A-bomb marker into... Uh, let's see how that... How does that work? Oh, so when they get to total war, the A-bomb marker goes two turns ahead on the turn track. 1945, historical. And uh, the Americans also get commitment offense. Oh, you know what? That was dumb, wasn't it? I think we have to take it back and just fix that issue. Why can't I remember these things when I'm actually doing it? Uh, the Americans can't use their flag yet because they will get zero commitment offensives. However, the British flag will pretend that was their role instead. The British were going to do the exact same thing. Um, they are going to go to total war, and they do get commitment offensives because they have some in, in, uh, in reserve here. One goes into reserve, and that's it. They can only trace the one to London. So they at least get one more offensive by going to total war. So that was good for them. Um, and they also get a few more things added to their countermix. Which will they pick? Uh, what do they need? They probably need at least one more army. No question about that. Uh, so they get one more army to their force pool. Um, hmm. I'm going to give them a carrier upgrade since we now see that they are in kind of danger of uh, not having that. Um, and then, do they need one more air? Ooh, they've got one, two armies, and then a third down there. That gives them four. <sighs> they have a lot of ground to cover, and they have one, two, three air. Let's give them one more air. They have one more air on here already. But let's give them one more. There we go. So, the air, the carrier upgrade, and the uh, land army. <clears throat> okay, so that's the United Kingdom going to total war. Uh, now, the Germans are going to interrupt and put down an air unit in Poland. That allows the British to interrupt again and use their offensive. What are they going to use that offensive for? They're going to use it to get the carrier upgrade marker and put it in reserve. So that's two of their available uh, builds. Uh, well, two of their available military actions. The last one is going to be... I don't want to attack the subs until I get the carriers. That gives us just a nice guarantee of success there. What will the last one be? 
I guess they'll just do a regular build of uh, their land unit, and they'll put that in reserve, or into the cup, sorry. So three total points, two for the carrier upgrade, one for the land army, and it's in the cup. All right. That allows the Japanese to interrupt and place their army in Tokyo, and that will go then to wherever they like. I think they're going to want it to be in Guangdong. Uh, actually, it doesn't really matter if it's in Tokyo or Guangdong. What is, Guangdong allows them to choose Java instead of the Philippines. That gives them a little more flexibility. So that's them. The Soviets could then erupt, except that the British are going to interrupt and flip that unit there. Um, and now I see the flaw in my plan. They have to now bring that back to a coast. They should have done a deployment instead. Oh, well. You live and learn. And the Soviets do now have the option to interrupt, and they will interrupt to flip over another army to a tank army. And that leaves the Americans to interrupt, but they're not going to do it. They're going to save that until they can spend some of their many offensives. They would actually get four commitment offensives. They want four, four offensives to get spent this turn before they go to total war in order to not lose any of that. Uh, so the Americans aren't going to go. The Italians instead will upgrade their fleet that's in uh, the Tyranian Sea there. And we then go to the cup. It's a crisis right off the bat, a wartime crisis. Let's find out what it is. A 4-3. All right, a 4-3 on the wartime table is a political crisis. Labor strikes. If France has a counter in reserve, remove it. Nope, no result. All right, so then we move on. Pull the next thing out of the cup. A Soviet offensive. Hmm. Methinks... They want to move their units around a little bit. I think the first thing they're going to do is a deployment. Or do they want to do an attack? They don't have any kind of superiority right now, but they could do an attack with a plus one to keep the parity. They would have to basically activate both of these tank armies in order to go in there. In order to do that, they need to spend both. But you know what? You want to get that plus one. So they're going to spend one military action as an operation to move this tank army in. They spend another military action to move the Romanian tank army in. They now have parity with the Germans there. Uh, and then they'll spend the last to augment it with a plus one. So that's 2d6 plus one for the air battle against the 2d6 for the Germans. That's a five. The Germans roll a four. The German air must retreat to Czechoslovakia, which allows them to cover all three of those areas. And next, the... Let's see... Next, we get the land battle with the, the Soviets. Yep, they're at 3d6 plus 1. That is a 7. The Germans are at 2d6. A 3. 7 to 3 is 2 losses for the Germans. So they take 1 loss, and they could retreat to avoid losing the other one, and they probably will, but if they do... Oof. It's a tough call. I think they do have to retreat to avoid losing that extra tank army. That's a tough pull. All right. Yeah, they're going to retreat. That gives the Soviets another uh, victory point. And the... Oops, I gave them a second one by mistake. And the Germans lose a victory point, And the fascists, coincidentally, also have to lose a victory point. Okay. So, now, what are the Soviets going to do here? The Soviets cunningly are going to pull both of their tank armies back to the Ukraine and regroup this army in to defend Poland, um, expecting to probably lose it. Uh, we'll keep the air in Poland? Or can the air stay in Belarusia? You know what? No. We're going to keep it just like this. If they want to take back Poland, they can. It doesn't hurt us. We don't have to take a stability test. And it'll give us a little buffer time to build up our fortresses. Um, yeah. That's not the worst thing in the world. If the Germans do it, they're not going to hurt us, and then we can hit them back again with an augmented attack. Remember, those augmentations are really strong. If the Germans have to take Poland, uh, with that, and then they, they would lose the opportunity to hit us with a plus two augmentation. Having a buffer zone can be a very good thing. So that's what the Soviets are going to do. That was their offensive. That goes back to the, uh, to, the, to the power sheet there. Then we get the German offensive, which, well, it's hard to see them not taking Poland back, but I think they actually might just use it for builds right now. Uh, they're going to put a tank upgrade in reserve, and they're going to put an air unit in the cup. That's three. Done. They don't want to put 
anything in Poland until they can at least get tank parity with the Soviets doing it. Okay, and then we pull from the cup. It's another Soviet offensive. They could also get some builds here. Do they want builds over in the Pacific Theater? What do they need to do? What they need is victory points and resources. Manchuria is very weakly defended. I think they're going to consider that. They're going to do um, a land, two land armies and an air unit. Land army, land army, air unit. That's the three of the Soviets. They're putting that back. And that allows the Germans to spend their uh, interruption to flip over their tank army. The Soviets are now... Oh, now, um, sorry. The Soviets are going to put their air down before that happens. They'll put it here in Mongolia, which gives them a lot of flexibility on defending all of this if needed. Uh, and then the German home front comes out because the Americans are continuing to pass, hoping for the American uh, offensives to come out. So the German home front could hurt them pretty badly here. 2d6 minus 2. That's a 2, so only one loss of stability level. Remember, if it's 0 or less after that minus 2, they lose 2 levels of stability. But now the Germans get some freedom to move things around the way they might like. How might they like? Well, they could go take Romania. That's way more valuable than Poland is right now. And they could do it without using the tank armies. They could try to do this and this and hope that they get an air unit out before they need to defend any of this over here. We know the British don't have any strategic bombers right now, and we know they didn't put any strategic upgrades in the cup. So we don't need this strictly to defend those, and they could attempt an invasion, um, but we can turn around and smash it. Yeah, they're going to take the chance. They're going to try to get Romania back. It's nice defensive terrain if the uh, Soviets attack into it. They don't get the tank advantage. So, yeah, that's how they're redeploying their forces in order to try to take advantage of that. Um, and do they want to do anything sneaky vis-a-vis -vis sending some kind of Africa Corps down to Libya? That's an interesting play. We don't need this. Let's have them take control of French North Africa, and the Italians can help garrison Romania against the Soviets. That'll give us more flexibility. Yeah, okay, I like it. Now the next German offensive can take North Africa, giving the Axis a port here, allowing the uh, Italians to then deploy to French North Africa and attack the British fleet in Gibraltar after dealing with the American subs, which are protecting it, unfortunately. All right, that's a very interesting play. Okay. So Germany's done with the home front. Next, out of the cup, Civil War resolution. We have Spanish Civil War. The Americans are adding a die to the, not, no, <laughs> the left side of the fight. 3d6 is a 5. 2d6 for the right side is a 4. Is a marginal victory in the Civil War. The Americans get plus 1 to influence in Spain. 5 to a 4. Not the result they were hoping for. Now, over in... The Chinese areas, the Germans are still in charge of the Chinese communists, so they are going to attempt expansion in Xinjiang, which they can do because the Civil War is over. Two dice to expand into Xinjiang. It worked. The Chinese communists continue to uh, prosper, and that kicks out the Soviet cube, reducing their total VP. So we now go back to the cup. And the American offensive that they were waiting for, they still don't have air to hit Hawaii with. That's a problem. They can't use it as a... They'd like to get some flags, but, uh, man, flags are going to be really hard to come by unless they can take enemy territory. Not a lot of options as far as that's concerned. So they might use this as a deployment. Why? Because, damn, if they don't need... Something over here to help the British with these stupid subs. And, yeah, we're going to do a deployment here. Uh, we're going to put one of these carriers in Washington, D.C. We got two more fleets coming out. And we're going to put a third on the track right now with the other two pieces of this offensive. Oh, during the deployment, what can this sub do? It can go to Midway. 
Is that terribly useful? It prevents the enemy from taking it for free with a base capture. That's not the worst thing in the world. Force them to spend an extra actual risk of their fleets? No, they've got carriers and air superiority. That wouldn't be worth it. Would it be worth putting anywhere else, like the Mid-Atlantic Ocean, to help bottle up the Italian fleets, which are pretty scary right now? Hmm. Yeah, might as well. I mean, we don't want to just want it to sit there, but we do want to use it in the Pacific. We'll leave it there for now. Okay, that's the American offensive. They use it to deploy, and then they use it to build a fleet for next turn. Uh, so now we need three more of those to come out before the Americans try to get to total war. Hey, there's another one. Uh, and now they're in a position to actually attack one of these subs. Um, unfortunately, they're not going to have any air support, but that's okay. They're going to try anyway. The Americans need to get in the game here. So that's one, two. That's well within their normal occupational range. Uh, they don't have to roll at uh, extended range then, so they're rolling two dice straight up against the one die from the German subs thanks to carrier superiority. Here we go. Uh-oh, that's a three. <gasps> Five to a three. The Americans must retreat to avoid taking a loss. Well, I think they're going to do it again. That's the reason they didn't augment it in the first place, because they didn't have really high odds of losing it, so they might as well do it a couple of times until it's successful. 2d6. A 4 versus a 6, and they force a retreat again. We'll use the... That's, that's both of their actions. They can't go again. Damn. And you know what that means? They actually could not, I forgot they're not at total war, they couldn't put the fleet into the thing and do the deployment, so the fleet wasn't constructed. Instead, it must have been an air force that went into, uh, that it went into the cup. That's the only thing they could have done when they deployed last turn. Sorry about that, guys. I'm still flying through here in an attempt to keep it moving. Aha! The Soviets gain the fortress at just the proper time before the Germans can get their offensive. The fortress goes into Romania and makes it Nigh unpregnable. Impregnable? Impregnable. And we go straight back to the cup. A German offensive. Oh, bad timing for the Germans. It's a real bad time going into Romania right now. Even though they don't have air support, it would be 3D plus 2 versus 2D plus 2. Really not good odds for the Germans. At the same time... If they had... A tank army there, then they wouldn't mind tying. But right now, if they tie, it's a net loss. So what they're going to do is they're going to spend two of those to uh, build this tank upgrade marker, and they're going to spend the other action to invade French North Africa. They're going to declare a land operation against French North Africa. The Italian air from the Sardinia air base is able to come in and support no other supporting units can come in because French North Africa is neutral. And so this is a 3d6 versus a 1d6 plus 1. Here's the 3d6. Oh, gosh. They're doing so badly. All the rolls. And here's 1d6 plus 1 for the French North African defenders. It's a 2. It's not enough. It's not enough. The Germans breathe a sigh of relief as the Italian air goes back to Sardinia. Actually, could it stay? It's going to stay in French North Africa, man. There's no reason not to stay in French North Africa. It's great here. Yeah. It's awesome. It's it's it, it's great. It's We're loving it. The Germans get plus one victory point. The fascists get plus one. And the French score doesn't change because there's it's, a cube is a cube. Any cube on their areas is a, is a problem for them. And I think we might leave the Germans here in French North Africa. It makes it a little bit harder for any attacks to come into Africa. They don't have to defend any of these things while this is the case. Um, or do the Germans want to think about going into, like, I don't know, Turkey? I don't know. It's difficult to say, I don't think they want to do anything like that right now. But the Italian air here now can support in mid-Atlantic Ocean, Western Med, Terranian, and Central Mediterranean. All of those can be supported by this air unit. Good. Great. That's what the Germans wanted to see, so they're done. Next, we pull out of the cup an American offensive. I think they have to go back against these subs, but we'll augment it with a plus one this time. We, we can't mess around here. So, 2d6 plus one versus 1d6. Oh, great. Now we get a 7 and a 1. Absolute devastation, but 
that does not count as a triumph and disaster because it wasn't a fleet that was lost. Sub packs never count as a triumph or disaster when they are taken over. So the Americans are done clearing the way. They're going to retreat to uh, rebase to Scotland when they're done. They're going to regroup there. That was both of their actions. The Germans interrupt to flip their tank, their army over to a tank army in Hungary. Now they might consider the Romanian attack or the plus two if, I mean, that's a damn hard thing to spend an offensive on, but Romania is kind of worth it. So we pull from the cup and a Soviet infantry force. Well, the Soviets did see that, but they're counting on Romania to hold strong. I think the Soviet infantry is going to go to Urkursk. You know, just because Japanese are now sweating. The Japanese can do less about that than the Germans can. And an heir, which is exactly what the Soviets wanted to come out, goes straight to the Ukraine, which can support in Romania as needed. Very good. Very good, yes. So now we go back to the cup and see what happens. A German offensive, and now the Romanian attack is much less potent. The air now able to support in Romania makes it much riskier. But we could attack with the Italians. No, we can't. We, well, we could spend another to activate the Italians and have them come in too. That wouldn't really help us much. Wouldn't really help us. Eh, we got the augmentation. Let's do it. We got to weaken them. We got to burn them down. The Italian next Italian action can maybe take it out if we take out their air. We're going to augment it with a plus two here. The Germans are going into Romania with their tank army, and they will support with both the German and Italian air. That way they win on ties in the air. The Russians now have to make a big consideration here. If they put their air in, it's now 2d6 plus two versus 2d6. It's a pretty good chance that their air might get destroyed rather than simply get lost or retreat rather but they don't want to lose Romania and that fortress needs the air support so they're going to go in all right 2d6 plus 2 for the Germans is a 7 2d6 for the Soviets is a 4 it's not the worst thing in the world 7 to 4 is not double so the Soviets only get one loss which is negated by retreating and now the Germans have air superiority 3d6 plus 2 versus 2 uh 2d6 plus two for the adverse terrain and the fortress not great odds for the germans very likely to be a tie that is a six for the germans and a four for the soviets and the fortresses can't retreat so it is destroyed and the soviets lose yet another cube i'm sorry i put them up one they should be down one and the germans gain one well, bold strategies can sometimes pay off. Now they're allowed to regroup. And I think they're going to regroup the armor back into Hungary so that the Italians can actually garrison Romania. And that is beneficial in the sense that if the Soviets attack Romania again, we don't we have two steps there. It doesn't matter if they're Italian or they're German. Um and we save the German armor to maybe take advantage of uh, the nice big planes over here uh, in the Soviet steppe. We're going to need a, a, Ger a German uh, deployment here sometime in the near future to do something with that unit or Hungary. Or it can stay there for a counterattack in Romania as needed later. All good. Next, out of the cup, a British fortress. Now, this is the other thing the British were worried about because of their you know, current situation. Now it's been it's been partly solved because the Soviets have been focusing on Romania, or the Germans have been focusing on Romania, but they were a little worried about German offensives coming out to deal with them. But because we were able to upgrade this to an uh, air unit, the Germans said, no, we can't anymore. It's not viable. But the British fortress could go in Denmark. Denmark is not restricted, and it would guarantee. But you know what it would do? It was It would block more than one unit attacking from Denmark, which is not great. Um, we could. Can't send it all the way to the Bay of Bengal. It gets stuck in South Africa. Ugh. It can't make it all the way. And then it would, uh, yeah, you can't send a fortress all the way over there without Egypt under your control and a clear way through the Med. I think they just put it in London because at least then they don't have to worry too much about the naval situation they can pick it up and move it later but that's a decent that that's a load off their mind if they then move the tanks to denmark to try to do some attacks even if things go as horribly as they did last time they still have a fortress in london and that's good all right now we go back to the cup second crisis 
A 6-5, partisans. The Soviet Union chooses an area without any powers, land units, and at least one democratic or fascist cube. The controlling power performs an effectiveness check. If it fails, remove all cubes and retreat all non-land units from the area. Well, that's an interesting thing. They could try to pull Yugoslavia away from the Italians. That doesn't cut off the supplies, though, because they can go through Austria. Uh, oh, they could give the British back Egypt, but I don't think they want to do that. They'd rather hurt the fascists more. Um, if they force the Germans to try to roll for Hubei and the Germans fail, then the Chinese communists come under control of the Soviets instead. So all expansion decisions would be made by them, and they can use it to take out the Japanese. But the Japanese are the only targets now, so they don't need that anymore, do they? Manchuria is defended. Huh. I don't know. What's going to screw the Germans over the most? You know what? Maybe they want to get rid of Finland because they don't want the Germans to easily come in through the north gate here. They don't want that attack as a possibility. So they're going to force the Germans to roll an effectiveness check for Finland. They actually keep it so it is irrelevant. So we move on. An American infantry unit might just go to Portugal. We don't need them in Scotland. Or it could go to Denmark. It could go to Denmark. That's a much better threat. As long as we have Denmark, we don't need... I mean, Portugal is another attack in through Spain as needed later. But, um, yeah. Okay, now we've had three American offensives. Let's get one more out of there. Nope, we get a Japanese offensive instead. That's what they've been waiting for. They've been waiting for that for a while. Uh, they, 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 I'm thinking they don't want to keep their fleet in the Hawaiian Islands, even with logistics base there, they put a second fleet there. That's still problematic because the Americans can hit them with a plus two augmentation when they hit total war, and you don't want to be sitting around waiting for that. You'd rather take over stuff. Right now, we're going to be taking over Java, for example. So the Japanese declare an invasion of Java with this infantry army, and that is going to be using two... Uh, of their military actions. Now, they can't afford to miss this. Every offensive is precious, so they are going to spend the plus one to augment it. They are going to get the air support. Uh, so this is 3d6 plus one versus 1d6 plus one. The adverse terrain and the naval invasion do not stack with each other. Uh, but the air from the Americans can come in and maybe contest this. So this is 2d6 plus 1 for air. For Japan is at a 4. 2d6 for the Americans. Whoa! A 7 almost doubled it, but didn't quite. Uh, so that means the Japanese air has to retreat back to the South China Sea and Hainan base. That's bad news for the Japanese invasion because now the Americans are rolling 2d6 and the Japanese are rolling 2d6. 2d6 plus 1 versus 2d6 plus 1 could be bad for the Japanese. Here we go. 2d6 plus 1 for the Japanese is a 7. That's great. Here comes the Americans back at him. It's a 5. It's not enough. All right. So the Americans retreat back to uh, the Philippines and we get a Japanese cube in Java. Remember, none of these are provocations because everybody's at war with everybody else, uh, which is great. That means the... I'm still at limited supply here. The air units, supporting units, never have to check supply. Don't forget that. Um, so now this is in a position to attack the Philippines, and then the land battle would be at a minus one. All right, that was all of the military actions from that Japanese offensive. And now we go to the cup, and the Soviet home front could be bad for them. It's at a minus two. That's a three. They're okay. They only lose one level of stability. Now they get to deploy, though. What will they deploy? Hmm. I think they're going to deploy this Moscow army over to Irkutsk. Japan's a little bit worried now. They need another one of their uh, another one of their attacks to come out. I'm actually going to put these up here so we can see everybody that's had their home front already. Um, yeah, they need to get some air units up to guard Manchuria right now. They don't want to take Java and then lose Manchuria, but they did need to take Java. All right, that is done. So we move on to the cup again. It's an American fleet which is going to go into California, which oops, which we know, again, is a safe place. They don't have to worry about anything there. So now we go back to the cup. It's the Italian offensive we've all been waiting for. Uh, 
what the hell are they going to do? I guess the Italians have to uh, attack the Western Mediterranean with their air and naval forces. Now, the unit in the Central Med cannot support because it is not currently in a base. It is in a sea area without a base, which means it's on patrol and it can't move into an operational area for an operation, um, which is too damn bad. Uh, so the question is, do we augment this or do we move this fleet with a deployment after the fact? No, we could move that fleet with a deployment before the fact, but we probably want to do it after. Okay, yep, we're doing a, an attack into here. This is one, one military action, no augmentation. This is 3d6 versus 1d6. There's a six, there's a four. The Americans must retreat to a port within range. They can go back to Portugal. And the Italians can then rebase to French North Africa. And then they're going to do a deployment, which allows them to rebase their other naval unit, uh, their other carrier group here, to French North Africa. So, pretty good setup here for the Italians in Africa. They've done phenomenally well. Um, they're, they're happy with this, and now the next offensive they get can be a strike on Gibraltar with carrier superiority, uh, and they'll have backup carriers as needed. They can now strike as far as the Western approaches if the Allies try to garrison it. That's pretty damn good. And they could rebase to Brittany if they wanted to start striking the, the British fleets up there. That's a decent amount of threat, but they don't have a lot of offensives to do it with. So they're going to be able to hit Gibraltar. That's the last thing they'll be able to do this turn, probably. Unless they go to total war, but man, I would not recommend that. The Americans with the armor upgrade absolutely happening in Denmark, by the way. Next out of the cup is a German offensive. Well, they're going to try to fix this problem right quick. They're going to do a deployment action, which pulls this armor back from Hungary and puts it in to the Ruhr. Uh, they now have a pretty good defense there. And do we need to pull an air back? No, because the air in Silesia can support in the Ruhr as needed. Uh, so we got two more actions left for the Germans. They don't actually have any more armies to upgrade on the map. Every army that's on the map is upgraded. Uh, so building another one of these isn't a great idea. They could build the sub back up, or they could attack something. Let's attack Poland. How many offensives? The Soviets still have some. You know what would be really sneaky? You know what would be really sneaky? The Soviets aren't in a position to attack out of Poland. They will need at least two more offensives, one to deploy into Poland and then another one to attack into Silesia. And the Germans are feeling extra sneaky. They're going to move up to Finland as part of the deployment that moved this here. So this is still their first military action. And the Romanian plane is going to come back to Silesia. And then on the next offensive, they can strike into Archangel and thence to Moscow. That's pretty sneaky. And the one unit stays in Finland to make sure that they keep the supply line secure in case they do manage to get Moscow. So, now they have two more actions. I think they're going to take this armor upgrade anyway and stick it in the cup. Later when it comes out, hopefully we'll have an infantry army ready to go. If not, we'll put it in reserve. And it sucks that it'll be taking up our reserve, but I know we've got at least two or three infantry armies in there that we built this turn. So... Let's go back to the cup. The Americans are still waiting for one more American offensive. There's the infantry army we were promised. And we're going to put it in Silesia to help out there. And next we get Il Duce. I think he goes in reserve. The Italian home front has not come out, and they are extra prone to collapsing, so we want to make sure their stability stays way up. Next out of the cup, a German offensive. Just what they were hoping for. Stability is at wavering. They could do it. They're declaring an offensive against Archangel. There's no air support in the north, so they move in with tanks, they move in with the plane, and they are not augmenting this attack. Yeah, they're not augmenting this attack. So, here we go. Or will they? They will augment this attack. Yep, they're going to spend two military offensives, here, military actions here, one into Moscow. That's the best opportunity they have. 3d6 plus 1 versus 1d6 plus 1. That's a 6. That's a 5. The Germans do it. 
They've captured Archangel. That's a stability test for the Soviets. And it is a flag for the Germans, which they can put into the cup. Because we need to, actually, we don't need to keep our reserve free anymore. If that land army comes out, we can now upgrade the Silesian army. Uh, so the Soviet stability test is taken at 3d6 thanks to propaganda, and it succeeds. They did not fall. Why is taking Moscow important? Well, it forces the Soviets to turn around and do something about it. And it'll give them flags if they come back and retake it. Uh, but it'll certainly prevent them from being aggressive against Germany. Uh, and that's the important thing. We can get the hell out of here at the end if we want. All right. Now we use the last offensive. Remember, we can trace into a restricted area without any problems. So we're going to attack into Moscow from Archangel, which is where we get our supplies from, so we don't have any supply issues. Uh, and Moscow is undefended. Remember, the Soviets went back over here to do something sneaky against Japan, and they left Moscow open, so that's why this is a thing. Uh, and they get 3d6 plus 1, and the defender gets... Not plus 1, I'm sorry, 3d6. The defender gets 1d minus 1, because they get armor superiority. Here's a 3d6. Straight up is a 6. 1d6 minus 1 is a 1. It is glorious. It is a victory, not a triumph, but the Germans get another two flags, actually. Uh, but they only have the one in reserve in the available markers box, and the Soviets must take two stability tests. Here's the first. Here's the second. They pass both of them. Jesus. So now they fall back to Archangel because we do not want to be caught in Moscow. We would be out of supply if we were there. But the Germans get to put down two cubes here in Moscow. So, shaking the Soviets to their core. Moscow sneakily attacked with the help of the Finns there. That's why we wanted to get rid of the Finns earlier with that uh, the partisans from the Soviet Union. Now they are seeing the error of their ways. Well, they actually did what was right, but the error was moving another unit over here and getting greedy with Manchuria, right? So now the Soviets may be able to hit back. Let's see. Nope, that's the American offensive that they've been waiting for. I think they go for the Ruhr. With a double, with a single augmentation, unfortunately, but they go for it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, alternatively, yeah, we don't have the ability to go after Pearl yet. So the British can tag along because they're allies. The British air comes in, the German air comes in, and the air has a battle. 2d6 plus 1 for the allies is a 6. 2d6 straight up for the Germans is a four. The Germans must retreat the air to save it, and now the Allies have air superiority. Uh, 3d6 plus one. 2d6 plus one for the Germans, thanks to the fortress. That's a five. That's a six. The Germans drive them back. Well, you gotta try. You gotta try. The, uh, the Allies made a valiant attempt to get into the Ruhr, and they couldn't do it, because they only had the one augmentation there from the Americans, but now the Americans are ready to use their flag. Germans is also ready to use their flag. They're going to do propaganda right now. 2d6 for them is a failure. Uh-oh. Uh, and then the Allies, the Americans can interrupt. They are going to attempt to increase their commitment to total war. Or are they going to wait until their home front comes out? They've waited this long, but they want those offensives, and they want them all to be at three. So they're going to spend it. And they are going to go up to total war. Remember, it's free, actually, to go to total war. You don't have to roll for it. I don't know why I rolled before. But now the atomic bomb goes to 4546, and the commitment increases to total war. The Americans get to add six, six things to their uh, force pool. And we're just going to add one of each. One, two, three uh, fortresses? No, four. And do we need any other? Like, maybe an air upgrade? Five. And then another air unit, six. Yeah, now what do we have? We have three air units in reserve to build. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff to build, but now they're building at a much stronger rate. And now they get those four offensives back for commitment offensives, one for each uh, industrial resource they can trace to, and they get the four in their home area. So there's the three back in the cup, one in reserve. Il Duce still holding on, so we go to the cup, and it's another American offensive. This time, it's at plus two, baby. Uh, and they are... Thinking about ending the German naval threat once and for all, they could attack, but the British can't support because they're not in port. They're just patrolling to make sure the Germans can't. We'll go back into the Rhineland situation here. Uh, here we go. The same thing we did before the Germans come in. This time, though, the Americans have a plus two augmentation. That's a six against the Germans. Six. It's a tie. Both air go 
to the force pool. This time again, we have uh, 2d6 plus 2 versus 2d6 plus 1. That's a 7 for the Americans and a 5 for the Germans. They take a hit and the Americans and the British retreat back to Denmark. A successful attack by most standards. And we go to the cup. A Japanese flag. Man, they are really wanting to hold on to that in case they get their home front and lose their stability, which they very likely will with total war. So they're definitely reserving that flag. Next out of the cup, an American offensive. You gotta say, at this point, they've used all of the good attacks they can use, but they still gotta go into Germany. They gotta go into Germany while there's no air support for either side. They don't care. They have tank superiority this time, thanks to their uh, the destruction of the German uh, armor unit there. So this is 2d6 uh, plus 2 versus 1d6 plus 1. Pretty good odds for the Americans. Here it is. That's a 7. That's a 2! 7 to 2 is 3 losses for the defenders. They can only absorb 2. That is a triumph for the Americans. 1, 2. And the, uh, the German naval units have to rebase, and they can rebase to a friendly port. They're going to rebase to... Uh, to Silesia here, um, and a disaster for the Soviets. So the triumph gives the Americans a flag, and uh, the capture of the Ruhr gives the Americans a flag. And we put a cube here. The Germans lose a victory point. The Americans in the democracies gain a victory point, and the fascists lose a victory point. I'm probably not quite right on that, but it's close. And now the Germans must suffer a stability test. Only 2d6 for them. They pass it. So they're still hanging in there. But things are looking awful. Despite their Moscow attack, they need to do something. But the Americans are just waiting. They're gnashing at their teeth to go for Berlin. So let's get this offensive out of the way and see what comes out of the cup next. Ooh, that's bad news for the Germans because now the Americans can interrupt with this offensive. Uh, the, Brit the, the Japanese, though, are going to try to make use of this. Where are they going to put it? They can put it back in Guangdong. Yep, they're going to try to make the best case out of that. And that means the Americans are definitely interrupting with this offensive. They're going to attack Berlin do they want to augment it? They have to because they don't have any air support. And that sucks. All right, so they're going to add a plus one. So they're going in, and I think they leave the British behind. There's no reason for them to go in. Um, so they go in with... Uh, they don't have any air to bring in. Jesus, they have to spend that other a build on an air unit, I think. Uh, but they're going in with uh, 2d6 plus 1 versus 1d6 minus 1, thanks to the tank superiority. Here is 2d6 plus 1 is a 5. 1d6 minus 1 is a 4. And Berlin has fallen. That is another two flags for the Americans, which they can't possibly use right now. Uh, but we're going to put one in reserve. And then two stability tests for the Germans. Here's one. Here's two. They hold on to both, but they need to take this stuff back. Right now, they are out of supply. They no longer have a production site. Bad, bad news for them. But they can redeploy these panzers back to Silesia and hit the Americans before they can get air support, perhaps. But the last thing the Americans are going to do with this offensive, they, they only augmented with a plus one going in there, so they have one military action left. They're going to build an air unit. Do they want to put the air unit in reserve? They absolutely do. Throw the flag in the cup. We don't care if we don't get it right now. The air unit is going in reserve with the build instead of the flag. All right. And the Americans, do they keep the unit in Berlin? Or do they fall back? If they keep it in Berlin and the Germans attack the Ruhr, that's bad news for the American armor that gets cut off there. They're going to play it safe and fall back to the Ruhr. Let's keep our bridgehead. We've got a much, much larger economy. We don't need to take chances here. The Germans do. So, then we could go to the Japanese flag, but they're waiting for the home front, and they don't want to allow the Americans to place the air anyway. So now the Germans are hoping for something to come out for them. No, it's an American air unit, which goes straight to the Ruhr. And then we go to the cup again. Japanese land army upgrade. Java's getting upgraded. That's great for Japan, but still, 
Um, yeah, they can't do much with it. There's the American upgrade. Now they can hit Silesia and Bavaria and not East Prussia. They can't force the Germans to collapse just yet. Not just yet. Uh, but we'll hit Silesia and make it much more difficult for these guys to come back, right? This could be the end of Germany right now, unless uh, the Italians have something to say about it. Maybe the Italians can take Poland, allowing these guys to uh, come into Poland and attack that way, thusly. All right, so we're attacking into Silesia with air support this time. Man, Germany, that was a real sneaky move up there, but they didn't get to redeploy in time. The Americans got in there with all those huge numbers of offensives. So this is going to be 3d6 versus 1d6. Uh, this is with a... Uh, I haven't looked at the numbers yet. Let's see. Are they going to have an augmentation? Yes, a plus one augmentation. Oh, they... Damn, good thing they did. Holy crap, that's a three. Okay, uh, and now 1d6 is a one. That is another disaster for the... Germans! Oh, no! They lose that. Three losses means they have to take a stability test, which they finally fail. And then the Americans gain another flag, which they can't because they don't have any. And now they'll retreat. They'll regroup, actually, back to Silesia with the air. And for the final military action, they will attack Bavaria. And that will not be augmented. So this is a... Uh, straight up 2d6 versus 3d6 versus um, 1d6 plus 1. 2, 4, 4 versus 1d6 plus 1. Oh, that could have been bad for them, but it was not. 4 to 3 means the Germans have to suffer another stability test. They might collapse and surrender right now. Uh, let's see what happens. Here is their stability test. They held. They held. East Prussia's keeping them honest, keeping them together. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough. The Germans need to pull a couple of offensives in a row right now. Or at least a flag they can use to redeploy. Uh, their propaganda's hurting too, but if they lose these Prussia, it's game over anyway. Um, here's the thing, though. <laughs> the thing for the Germans is the Americans can't get to East Prussia until, unless the Soviets... unless they attack the Soviets. Do the Americans have the flag to declare war on the Soviets? The Germans are actually safe unless the Soviets force them to collapse. And to be honest, the Soviets don't want the Germans to collapse. They want them to get Berlin back and fight the Americans so that the Soviets can get more cubes first. The Soviets need Romania. The Soviets need to get to Berlin themselves before they try to fight the Americans. If the, if the Soviets can get Romania, Berlin, Ruhr, and Paris, and maybe even Provence and Lombardy, then, then the Soviets can fight the Americans on victory points. But man, until then, the Americans producing seven resources plus whatever the British produce is just too crazy strong. So... Let's see what happens next. The Americans are going to put out their air unit, obviously, but where? We have one here. Do we need another one? I think we need another one. Uh, I really would like to put one in California, but you know what? The Pacific can wait. We need to take this opportunity while it's here and get the other air unit in there for the Americans. Uh, maybe the Italians can try to pressure the Germans. Yeah. I think Il Duce jumps in and takes one for the team. No, Italy's much more likely to fall than Japan. Japan's going to pressure the Germans. 2d6. It is successful. The Germans gain a flag. It's their only hope right now. But the Japanese gave up their chance at increasing their stability for that. It's a tough trade-off. Next out of the cup... The British home front, that's good news. Good news for the Germans. They can now uh, get a unit to Sweden, get all these guys back to Sweden, attack into Denmark, and then get back to the Ruhr. If they can do that, they can cut off all the allies uh, that have to retreat that way, and then the Germans are back in supply. Great for them. All right. So the British home front, though, the British are at total war. This is 3d6 minus 2 is 1 stability loss for the British. All right. And... Next, we can do redeployments for the British. Uh, they are going to move their tank army to Denmark, much to the chagrin of the Germans, and bring an air unit over there. And yeah, there's nothing down here that threatens them. They're going to bring the other air unit down to Gibraltar. They can see the, wind, the way the wind is blowing down there. They want to give some air cover, at least, to their poor Gibraltar fleet, which has got its, uh, uh, its, its, its little 
It's a little problematic here. Okay, so that's the British home front. The Germans interrupt attempt maneuvers right now. 2d6, they got it. The best they can do is get to East Prussia and maybe attack through Poland. And that at least gets them to Berlin because they could go one, two, three, and then they would have to be back in supply. I think they have to do that. Too bad the Soviets didn't have the forethought to put their fleet out during one of their deployments, huh? That would have really screwed them. It would have also kind of... No, it wouldn't have prevented the Finland thing because the Germans could have gone to Sweden and then to Finland as a part of an operate. Yeah, I didn't want to stop them. Anyway, the air unit also joins them in Prussia. And by the way, so do the naval units. Like, Prussia is the last bastion of military. Like, the entire little area there is covered in German forces. Uh, okay. And now Germany's desperately hoping for one of their offensives to come out of the cup. It does not. It's an Italian air. Romania? France, North Africa. Romania. That's more important. All right. Germany's still desperately hoping. But an American offensive happens first. But what are they going to do with it? I guess they could try to free the Benelux or take Paris. Like, yeah, they can't get that right now without a naval invasion. They can't do a naval... Hang on. They can deploy to the Baltic Sea with their first action. And let's see if they want to do any other deployments. Whatever they do, they won't have air cover, will they? They can't put air... They don't have strategic air. Damn it. That's what they'll do. They deployed to the Baltic, and the other two on this American offensive will be used to get a strategic air upgrade in the hopes that this air can get out here, I guess. No, we're not going to do a deployment. That's going to stay in Scotland. The other one is going to be a something useful. Let's do another land army. Uh, no, another air unit. We're short on air units in the Pacific, so we'll put that in the cup. So that's all three of that American offensive. Next out of the cup, an American <laughs> American air upgrade. Okay, well, I guess we didn't need to do that, but next out of the cup is a British army, which will go directly into Silesia, right? Yeah. Oh, and the British home front, they would also put their army over there to help counteract this German offensive now that German offensive is much less likely to survive and uh, and work out there. But their previous deployment uh, of the air up here, problematic. Yeah, they put it down here. They should have put it in Silesia. Oh, no, the uh, American air can help in Silesia. All right, let's see if the Germans can have what they need. Nope, it's a Soviet flag. They'll use it on propaganda. 3d6 minus 1 for their posture. They got it with a six anyway. Soviet stability's up there. Next out of the cup, an American infantry unit. Uh, well, let's put that in there as well. Put it into the Ruhr. Or into Berlin. Let's make it really hard here for the Germans. Next out of the cup, Soviet air. Hmm. They're not going to want that to happen again. They're going to put that over in Leningrad. Next out of the cup, American air. We're actually going to put that in the Pacific. Uh, we need to consider that now that we have just almost certainly crushed the Germans. Almost certainly. Next out of the cup, Soviet offensive. Well, they're going to try to get Moscow back. It'll give them a couple of flags at least. Um, hmm. So they're going to attack Moscow without any augmentations. That would give them 3d6 versus 1d6. Pretty good odds. We're going to save the augmentation for something else here. So 3d6 for the Soviets is a 7. 1d6 for the defending German is, is a 6. That's a win for the for the Soviets. The German cubes are deleted. And the Soviets gain two flags for recapturing their capital. One's going to go in reserve. One's going to go in the cup. Now, that was one of their three military actions. The other two are going to be used on Manchuria. Because, the frankly, the Japanese are doing just too well. And, you know... If they had to declare war, this would be a problem. But because all of the fascists were ally allied when Rome, uh, Russia went to war with Germany, it also went to war with Japan. Japan's not happy about this, but they could win a pretty strong victory here with that plus one. Let's see, plus two, actually. So the Soviets are going to get a plus one augmentation on this. So that's 3d6 plus one versus 2d6 plus two. 
Seven to six. Oh, no. So close. They could have thrown them back, but they didn't. The Soviets have taken Manchuria. That is not good, but for the fascists. Um, but it's also really not good for the Soviets in a sense. They're going to have to fight the Americans soon. But taking that resource means they get to do it better than the Japanese, right? Okay, Japan loses a victory point. Um, next, that was all three of theirs. The Americans will spend their uh, air upgrade in the Pacific. And a British offensive comes out of the cup. Huh. Well, I think we're going to use this to whack the fleet in the Western approaches. We're at total war. We could also use it to get the uh, fleet in Gibraltar upgraded. But how valuable is that right now? You know what we didn't do? We didn't get a logistics base. Now I really wish I did to get Gibraltar up. Because, man, taking out these Italians is going to be a giant pain. One, two, three. It's going to have to be an extended range. Unless we get Provence back. Oh, no, Portugal's a friendly port. The British could could base two naval units there. Hmm. Yes, they could. But this offensive is kind of a waste against the German subs, isn't it? If the Germans are about to surrender, it's going to be a bit of a waste. We're going to do is a deployment first, and we're going to pull the fleet and the air unit out of the uh, out of range of the Italian forces. Interestingly enough, that's the uh, you know what else the Germans did. I'm sorry, the Germans absolutely rebased this guy from the south up to Czechoslovakia during their uh, rebase earlier, where they put everybody in Prussia. They definitely did that. Um. Yeah. Everything's safe now. So now the British use one deployment. Now they could attack into here with their two forces, but that's just not a good play right now for them. So instead, they're going to use it to put an army upgrade in reserve. And next we pull from the cup or the Soviets intervene here with a flag. Hmm. They might go after Romania, but not with a flag. Do they start trying to go for Tokyo before the Americans can? Hmm. That would be an extra war offensive for the pending war against the democracies. Huh. Do they want to gimp the Japanese like that, or do they want the Japanese to crush the Philippines first? Well, taking a Kaido doesn't knock them out of the game yet, but it does poise the Soviets to take Tokyo. Man, this is a hard choice, but the Soviets also could do diplomacy in China. Yeah, they could try to pick up some victory points there, actually. Because they get plus one to all of their diplomacy attempts. Let's do that with this flag. We just, we need to use it because um, we want to have some stuff there. Because we're going to get another flag back when we get Archangel. So let's spend this flag on diplomacy attempt in Xinjiang. And that's, you know, just a nice a nice extra VP that doesn't go away or doesn't... Ugh. No, you know what? We'll find something better to do with this flag. We're going to hold on to it for now. So we'll go to the cup. A Japanese flag which they want to put in reserve so that they can use it for something. I mean, do they need to redeploy right now to deal with the Manchuria threat? I think they do, yeah. 2d6 for maneuvers for Japan. Successful. They definitely needed that, actually. So they're going to get this falling back to Hebei. The air is going to join it. And we're going to switch places of Guangdong and Java so that when we go into Manchuria, we've got some resiliency? No. We'll leave the we'll leave the tank down there. We'll bring these guys up here. Um, we'll bring some forces back from Hawaiian Islands. We don't like what's building up over here. We know it's going to hit us. It's going to use offensives at a high level. We'll just let these things fall. So this is going to go in the cup as part of the deployment. 
these is coming back here. Let's see, how are we going to do this? We'll put this in the Western Carolina Islands along with this guy, and then this will come up here. So we've got two steps of air in both places. So we're ready to go in both places as we need. All right, that was the Japanese. That means the British are going to uh, use this to uh, flip over one of the armies here. And we'll go back to the cup. Soviet offensive. Huh. Do they want to build? Actually, the Americans can attack through Poland, now that I think about it, because the Soviets don't have defending forces there. It's considered to be a neutral country. And the Americans would have to pass an effectiveness check to do that. But... Did the Soviets want to prevent them from knocking the Germans out easily? Being in Poland also prevents the Germans from getting back easily. Man, this is a tough call, but I think the Soviets are just going to take this time to build up on the inevitable fight here. Um, you know, they could attack down here. They don't have tank superiority. That's a bad idea. they got to hold in Manchuria. They've got three. They could build a fortress for next turn and put a tank upgrade in there. They could take back Archangel whenever. All right, that's it. That's all they're going to do for now. They're waiting and seeing. Um, they got to take Romania sometime soon, though. The Italians might actually move out of there to try to help the Germans. Uh, we'll see. Next out of the cup... An American offensive. <sighs> they don't have the necessary forces in place to hit Prussia. So they will take back the Hawaiian Islands for free. Uh, because the bases that are empty don't have any resistance. And that is a one military action. They got two more. Well, they're going to put another tank upgrade into the reserve. Nope, not two, just one. And hopefully that will give them what they need here to uh, to attack Prussia and knock out the Germans for good. All right. Next we go to the Cup, or do we go to Il Duce, who wants to come back and help the Germans? Yeah, we're going to go for maneuvers with Il Duce. They got it. Six is enough. The Italians are attacking Poland. Uh, well, they only need one army. They don't need more than one. And we'll bring in uh, both air. Uh, the Soviets... <sighs> will not risk their air for no reason here. They don't care. If the Germans are going into Poland, it's to get back Germany, which means they're going to go bleed the democracies. The Soviets want that to happen before they fight the democracies. So... 3d6 with no augmentations versus 1d6. Uh-oh, that's a 4. That's a 4. It's a tie. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't consider that repercussion. The actual Italian player, if they spent enough time thinking about it, rather than the three seconds that I did, would have brought both forces to guarantee that uh, a tie would still result in their favor. I forgot about that useful piece of information, so let's pretend that they did that and not count them out. So that knocks out the Soviet cube and gives us an Italian one. And then the Italians regrouping, I think, allows friendly powers, but let's see. Yeah, the wording is land units, friendly land and air units that are friendly to the attacker may regroup. So the Italians regroup back to Romania and the Germans regroup out into Poland. Now, this is a risky move because if they leave East Prussia open... Uh, the Americans could come in here and take it easily. But at the same time, they have to fight through and they can't be spending two offensives to get in here. They have to be here when it starts. In fact, the Italian air is going to stay in there to try to help them. All right, with that, the Americans upgrade their other infantry in Berlin. 
and we pull from the cup, and the Germans pray to the gods of war. They did not get it. They didn't get their war god. Uh, we'll send that to the Pacific, since, again, it's looking like everything's coming up America over in uh, France and Germany. There's a Soviet offensive. Huh. They're going to attack Romania. Because, yeah, the fascists are going down and they want to take a piece of it, especially if it's got resources. So, the Soviets are declaring an attack in here. They don't need to bring both of their armor. See, the thing I was thinking is, when you bring in a second thing, you're just asking for uh, potentially losing way more steps than you can, or than, than you would otherwise if you didn't bring the second one. But, you always want to bring at least two steps into a fight in case a tie happens um, against the defender. So, that having been said, we're going to be doing this with plus two augmentation, because Romania is a tough nut to crack. So this is two dice. Oh, and the Italian comes back to try and help, or does it stay up here? They'll come back to help. Oh, that's a dangerous game. They're staying up here. 2d6 plus two for the Soviets. That's an eight. 2d6 for the defender is a two. Goodbye, Italy. It's a good thing they didn't bring the other one back. That would have been four uh, losses for the Italian air. Uh, not a triumph or disaster because air can never do that. Now we've got 3d6 plus two versus 2d6 plus one. That's a nine and that's a five, ladies and gentlemen. Nine to five is not a two to one, so the Italians may retreat. I guess they'll retreat to Yugoslavia and the Romanian uh, areas have been taken by the Soviets. And we increase that and we decrease the Germans and the fascists by one. I don't know how many times I've been, but the Germans and fascists go back up by one for the Poland they just took because it's actually not Germany. It's Italy goes up by one. Uh, there we go. Probably like that. Uh, we'll come back and fix all this later. I'm sure it's not quite right. Okay, so that was the Soviet offensive. That was the whole thing just taking Romania and regrouping in with uh, another four. So, boy, that's a tough call. We'll regroup back to Ukraine with the air just so we get some other options for defending just in case this, something goes crazy here. I don't see the Germans attacking us, though. All right, coming out of the cup. There we go. We can put another guy in Romania and help defend that area. So next out of the cup, German air cannot be placed because they do not own a production site anymore. France doesn't count because it's not one of the German home areas. Next out of the cup, a crisis marker, the third in the turn, 2d6 is a 4-1. Congressional investigations if the United States is counter in reserve, get rid of it, but they do not. We are now in sudden death, which I don't think comes even close to ending the turn with all this stuff in here, especially look how many German stuff is still left in there. They need this stuff to come out a Soviet, uh, sorry, a Japanese offensive. They're going to use that to try to take back Manchuria. And they're coming in with two tank steps and the air. And they're going to use double augmentation. Bad news for the Russians. They were hoping to uh, have the Japanese too distracted, but this is too important to the Japanese, so that's not going to happen. So, okay. Here's 2d6 plus 2 for the Japanese is a 6. 2d6 for the Soviets is a 2. Goodbye, Soviet Air Force. And hello, air superiority. So the Japanese are 3d6 plus 2. The Soviets are 2d6 plus 1. That is 8 to 6, forcing the... Hmm. They're just going to take the one loss instead of retreating. And the Japanese are forced back. The Soviets are hoping that they can redeploy some forces over here. They kind of have a lot available and we know that this Japanese only have one more offensive in the cup a German air that has to be thrown away because they can't place oh, yeah, good job Soviets good timing next out of the cup fourth crisis which if there are any things for at least four of anything in here uh, I see Soviet army there's two Soviets yep we've got four American things so we keep going there's a Soviet tank upgrade, but where? Romania? They could drive for Lombardy. Or they could put it in Manchuria to try to add a little resiliency over there. Hmm. It would also give an option to actually attack into China later. A 
second tank army here isn't necessary because you're de Hungary is the only lowland area that you can use those tanks in, except for like obviously up here. So that's where we're putting it up in the steppe in the central Europe here. All right, spent next out of the cup, Japanese logistics base. Hmm. If we're going to put multiple things somewhere, where would we do it? Maybe in Indochina in the future to attack here, but that doesn't really help. We could put it in Java. That doesn't really help either. Let's put it in uh, this here. That gives us some options later to beef up the Western Caroline Islands. All right, next out of the cup. Japanese offensive. They gotta try Manchuria again. They got to. So here they go, with another plus two augmentation. They get full air superiority this time. So 3d6 plus two is an eight. The Soviets are at 2d6 plus one is a six. They still only lose one force, and the Japanese are forced to retreat. Um, I think they're actually gonna retreat to Korea. Only because if the, if the Soviets decide to attack into Korea when it's empty, they can take and force the Japanese to take a stability test they do not want to deal with. So that, I believe, yes, is the final Japanese offensive. They are not going to get the Manchurian resource. Very bad for Japan. The fascists look so incredibly unstoppable, but not getting Denmark back. Going for Romania, going for Moscow, they got greedy. They got If they'd gotten Denmark, none of this could have happened. None of this could have happened. There's the German offensive. Their last hurrah. Now, they do still have one, two, three, four, five. They still have two more left in the cup, but the Americans have... Uh, six. There's four left somewhere on the map, including one in Spain and one here. So the Germans have two more in the cup. The Americans have two more in the cup. The Brits have one more in the cup. How does Germany want to play this? They're going to attack into Silesia with no augmentations. No, they got the air to deal with. They'll attack with a plus one augmentation and hope to hell this works. They're going to bring in the two air. The Americans have their air. Oh, they'll bring in both of their air. No. They're going to use both augmentations here. They have to try to clear out the air power, and the plus two is the best way to do it. So, here it is. Uh, 2d6 plus 2 for the Germans, and the fa- Ah! Ah! Ashists got two ones. Oh, God, they just aren't meant to have this, because they're also, uh, well, supporting units don't take any, uh, penalties for low supply, but the rest of the battle is going to be at low supply for the stupid Germans. Um, okay, that's a three. Let's see if the Americans can beat a three. They tie! Holy moly, but that's still going to give the Americans air superiority because they had the strategic air force to take the hit for them. Bad news for the Germans. So, plus one die for the allies for air superiority, minus one die for the allies for the tank superiority of the Germans. The Germans are at plus two, minus one because they're at low supply, and the allies are at straight up. Two dice plus two, plus one for the Germans. Five is not going to be enough unless the British roll some snake eyes. Here it goes. Ooh, five to four only nicks the British armor. They do not want to retreat, so they will definitely take the loss. And the Italian Air Force retreats as well. Lucky for the Germans, though, they didn't lose anything. They didn't lose anything. Uh, so they can just hope their other two uh, offensives come out quickly. Maybe even an, uh, a flag? Flag could do it. The crisis, which I don't think will end. One, two, three, four American things. We keep going. There's a German flag. Can't build anything. 
might as well use it for maneuvers, right? And you know what? If they retreat, the Italian heir is retreating to Czechoslovakia with the intention of supporting a possible desperation attack. <gasps> Ew. They could have retreated to Czechoslovakia. Not both of them. Because now they could attack into here and at least get Berlin back without having to go through Silesia. Or maybe that's just what they set up right now. Yeah, they retreated to Poland, but now they're going to attempt maneuvers with this flag. 2d6. Damn it. They needed that. Next up. Crisis again. We know there's at least four American things in there, so we pull again. Oh, an army upgrade. Okay. Sure. Czechoslovakia can have an army upgrade. Oh, no. You have to be able to trace a line of communication. They can't. No upgrade. Gets killed. We need the air more if we can ever build it. An American flag. Well, they're going to try for maneuvers and hope to invade East Prussia right now. Even without air support, they could still do it. So here we go. Maneuvers for the Americans is successful. Oh, no, they can't invade East Prussia because uh, they don't have two military actions to do it. Hmm. We'll instead just use this as a deployment for the Americans and move the other armor into Berlin. And the air can stay in Silesia here with the Brits. Um, what else do they want to do with this deployment? Well, um... This unit is going to go all the way down to Papa now that we got Pearl Harbor back. And it can actually go all the way to New Guinea. And what do we want to do with the American forces here? Well, the, the, the Japanese aren't in a position to launch an attack from Hokkaido, so I think the Americans are moving down to the Bismarck Sea. Oh, you know what? I overstacked over here before. I keep forgetting. The, it hasn't had any effect yet, but, you know. We can do this, and we can put the air in Papa to assist. And we can even put a fleet in Papa. That's nice, so they can support each other. And this can sneak over to the Philippine Sea and not really block lines of communication, but, you know, almost. It's going to cause some kind of problem, maybe. Oh, you know what? It would block lines of communication. We go here, one, two, three, four. Nope, it wouldn't block it light there either. If we had one more strategic air or or um, submarine, and we went all the way to here, then we could cut off these guys completely from the... Uh, no, because the Marshall Islands let them go here to here, and that gets all back there too. Right? Marshall Islands, if they go all the way to here, the Marshall Islands can go one, two, three, four. Yeah, so that it doesn't even work either. We're going to leave that in the Bismarck Sea. And I don't know what the subs are doing here. They're not really helping. They can go on the Marshall Islands, just prevent the Japanese from using it without killing the subs, but we're just going to put them in the Philippines and see what happens. All right, so that was their deployment. I don't think they have any other deployments they want to make over here. They can't move into Silesia because of the British, so that's all they do. Next, the German offensive they were hoping for, kind of. They have to hit Silesia again, right? With another plus two? Because they've got one more offensive in the cup, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, one more German offensive in the cup. They can take back Silesia, and then maybe they could take back the Ruhr, and that would be enough going into the next turn to get them to build again. And it would knock the Americans uh, out of supply in Berlin. Maybe allowing the Italians to help? No, the Italians did everything they could. They had nothing left. They have one offensive left. It's not going to be useful for them. Crap, this is a difficult play. Because they could also try to put redeploy these units to Czechoslovakia and attack there, but if they do that, they get nothing else to do. Yeah, they're going to hit Silesia uh, with a plus two augmentation and hope that they can knock out the air this time. Man, that tie really screwed them last time. Here we go. 2d6 plus two is a seven. 2d6 without anything is a five. That forces the American air to uh, get sacked. There's now air parity because they still have an air unit here. But the Germans have armor superiority, so 2d6 plus 2 versus 1d6, that's a 7. This could be big. 7 to a 4 is not big enough. It only knocks out one army. Damn. 
damn, damn, damn. They have to retreat. And this goes back to Czechoslovakia. If the Germans get a flag, they're going to change these two up because that's what they try to do with the maneuvers. They can put the two in Czechoslovakia, the one into Poland or wherever they want to put the one, maybe in East Prussia just to defend. And then they can try to hit Berlin. Or they could go through Bavaria and then try to hit the Ruhr. That's probably what they should have done. Jesus Christ, what am I, blind? I must be blind. I mean, they wouldn't be cut off with the Ruhr because of this stupid naval situation. All right, well, the Germans were blind. Who cares? It's, it is what it is. Next out of the cup is the Soviet offensive. They're going to probably try to build some stuff here and reinforce Manchuria. They know that the... Uh, so that's one and two, three. They got Romania. They could start making their way towards Yugoslavia, but they need more air to do that. Um, and I just built not air, didn't I? Yeah, let's pull that back and put air units in there. An air unit... And an armor upgrade. That's what the Soviets built with their offensive. Next out of the cup, hey, there's an army upgrade. We'll do it in Manchuria. Hold on to that resource. And the Germans can't interrupt, so we go to the cup. It's an American ah, flag. We're going to put that in reserve in case stability starts becoming a problem. Then the American home front, which means stability could be a problem. Here we go. 3D6 minus 2 is one level of stability down for the Americans. But this lets them do some redeploying. Crap, though. They don't have enough to cover everything they want to cover. Hmm. Huh, 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 huh. They're going to put the air into Berlin. And that's about it. They need to keep both forces in Berlin, otherwise the Germans could get armor superiority and pierce in there. All right, that's all they're going to do. Next out of the cup is actually a Soviet flag. They've had their home front. Do we want to hold on to this flag? I think we do. Let's hold on to it for next turn. We might not get a lot of flags back in the next turn. And what are we going to do with it anyway? Just do one build? One build? Is that worth it? Yeah, let's do one build. Here we go. Soviet build, 2d6. Ah, it's a fail. That was an attempt for maneuvers. All right. Next out of the cup. Okay. That's not what they wanted to see. They were hoping for one of their flags first. Now, they could try for Silesia again and then into Ruhr. Taking both of those would cut the Americans off. And with the armor advantage, that's probably the best way. Bavaria's got that plus one. That's going to make it real hard to do. So let's try it again. We've got to use everything at our disposal. Um, so we're going to do a plus one augmentation into Silesia with the Italian air supporting. So 2d6 plus one for Italy. This is the biggest roll the Italian Air Force has ever made in their life. It's a seven. The American Air, 2d6 straight up, is a six. They're forced to retreat. And now the Germans have the opportunity of a lifetime. Maybe they'll even gain a flag. 3d6 plus 1 versus 1d6. A 7 to a 1. Huge triumph for the Germans. They gain a flag for the triumph. They gain a flag for taking back what's theirs. And the British army is destroyed. Both armor are going to stay in Silesia. And then for the final attack, the Germans are going to move into the Ruhr with both armor. Oh, you know what? That was actually, I forgot to add a minus one for the um, low supply. So it actually would have been six to one. Still wound up winning for the Germans quite heavily. And uh, this time, both the American and British air can respond and there's no augmentation here. And that's going to be problematic. 2d6 for the Italians. They have to pull it out one more time. That's a 6. 2d6 for the Allies is a 4. They take one loss to the British air, I think. Um, yeah. 
No, the Americans are the defenders, so they have to take the losses. Damn. All right, well, air parity. The Italians managed to avoid losing the air battle too badly. So now it is 2d6 minus 1 versus 1d6 minus 1. Here we go. That's a 4. That's a 1. The Germans have recaptured a production site. Wow, they would gain another flag if they could, but they can't. Um, and the Italian air will stay there. And the Americans are completely cut off. They could try to force their way out to Silesia. That would give them a port back out to the North Sea. It's certainly something they would want to try. They have one flag. That might be the time to use it. In fact, it is what they're going to use it for. Maneuvers. 3D6. They missed. Oh, boy. And now the Germans can place this air in the Ruhr because they got a production site back. And now we go to the cup. Very exciting. The Soviets' wait and see has turned out to be very in their favor right now. The Americans might get crushed here, and then the Germans can co the Soviets can come sweeping in on a weakened Germany. That's what that was their hope. And a Soviet flag goes in reserve. We'll keep it to next turn. Make sure our stability stays up as the Soviets. Okay, next out of the cup, a German flag. Do they use it to try to crush the American armor? It's at a minus one. They could retreat to the Bavarian Highlands. Let's take that out first. That way they can't retreat. If any, any losses would have to be taken on full hits. So we're going to try maneuvers here for Germany. 2d6 is a success. They lose the cube. And they are going to attack Bavaria with one German armor and one air. That's 3d6. Uh, no longer minus one this time against 1d6 plus one for the defender. So that's a four. Uh oh, one d six plus one is a three. Is a four. Oh well, the, that's really bad. The Germans lost their upgraded tank armies, but they do take back Bavaria, and they're going to retreat back to the Ruhr to help defend that. Uh, and they gain a flag by doing that, which means the flag they just spent can go into reserve. Okay. And the Soviets are not spending there, so we go to the cup. Soviet air, Romania. They want to drive for Lombardy right now. Getting another industrial resource could be very valuable for the Soviets in the pending war against the Allies. Okay. Um, and that allows the Germans to spend their flag, which they absolutely will, on propaganda. 2d6. If they lose any of these territories to the Americans, uh, they could potentially collapse that way too. They are barely holding on right now. Propaganda, 2d6. They got it. Back to Wavering. They're doing a nice comeback here. The Japanese home front. 2d6 minus 2 is a 1. They lose one level of stability. Remember, they used their flag to prop Germany up and get them back in the war. So that is too bad, so sad for, this, for the Japanese. They don't have a flag to get that, that stability back up. All right, next we go to the cup again. It's another German flag. Oh boy, do they hit here even though they won't have armor superiority anymore. The Americans will have a minus one, but the Germans will be rolling fewer dice, but they'll be rolling more dice because they'll have air superiority. They really need that Berlin back. They need it badly, and there's no way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's no way for them to get that armor back that they lost in Bavaria. So unfortunately, that wound up being a bad call, but they didn't want the Americans to get knocked into Bavaria, then they're really hard to take out in the mountains there, even if they're at minus one. The hope was that now we'd be able to attack at a pretty significant advantage, and the Allies would have to take any losses without retreating. Okay, well, we're going to do maneuvers here for Germany. Uh, here is 2d6. It's a moot point. All right. Next, out of the cup, an American fleet... I'm going to put that in Pearl Harbor, just in case. Let's put some defense over there, right? Next out of the cup. Oh, the Italian offensive. What are they going to do now? Well, they might have to build some stuff. They only get two builds. Let's build them both, right? The Italian infantry and the Italian air. Let's build up the Italian air into reserve and the Italian infantry into the cup. Uh, they don't have any good attacks to make at this point. So we go back to the cup and hope for, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs.
Well, the Americans are at a disadvantage, but they're going to try to collapse the Germans anyway. They can try to make this happen. They would get air support from the Brits if they attack the Ruhr again. That's what they'll do. They'll be at a minus one for supply, but they're going to try it anyway. And the Brits come in to support here. So, uh, 2d6, and they're using both augmentations, obviously. 2d6 plus 2 for the British. Remember, supporting units never tra trace supply. That's a 6 against the defending air. A 4. Well, sorry, Germany. You have to you lose your air you just constructed, but it's air parity now. The Germans have only 1d6 thanks to the armor superiority of the Americans. Do you have to have supply to have armor superiority? I think not. I don't think there's any pro prohibition about that. No, there is no prohibition against getting armor superiority bonus when you're out of when you're in limited supply, so they still get it. So, the Americans force the Germans to roll at one die, but the Americans are rolling two dice minus 1. So here's two dice minus 1 for the Americans. That's a 2, one die for the Germans. A 6 to a 2! Oh, well, they had to try, right? But a 6 to a 2 is 3 losses. So the Americans are going to take 1 loss, 2 loss. You know what? 1 loss, and then I think only the first loss has to be on a tank. Yes, that's correct. Only the first loss has to be to flip an upgraded unit. The second loss, then, can be the army unit itself, and the third loss can be retreat back to Berlin for the Americans. They're not going to be able to collect that Berlin resource, but maybe they can deny it to the Germans. All right, next out of the cup, or do the Italians want to place their air forces down? They absolutely do. They're going to put it in... Oh, sorry, the Brits go back to Denmark. The Italians are going to place it into the Ruhr as well. That covers all of Germany here as a defending force. Um, and that's where it's really needed at the moment, although really it's needed in Yugoslavia too. They are watching those Soviets like a hawk, and they, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Oh, God, no, Germany is more important. The Italian air is going up there. Next out of the cup, the third, the fourth crisis could end the turn. Let's see. German flag, German air force upgrade, German flag. Is there another German thing in here? There is not. American, American, American. That's only three. Soviet, Soviet, Soviet. That's only three. I think this is the end of the turn. Yeah. Wow, the Germans really were hoping for that last one of those last flags they could use to get Berlin back, but they're going to be short a resource. Too bad for them. Too bad for them. This is a really interesting game. All right, so the the we we put the counters back where they go. Oh, I keep double clicking. Here we go. Uh, oops. I was stuck in the wrong place. There we go. So, this game still seems like anybody's game, but the democracies have a decided edge now that the Germans have had this giant falter and the Japanese have lost the, uh, the edge there. Um, the Soviets are going to have a hard time if they don't prop up the, the fascists a little bit here, or at least the Germans. They don't really care about the Japanese. The British get an offensive into their production box. The Germans get an air upgrade. The Italians... Oh, there's the Italian home front. They have to take that. 1d6 minus 1 is just one level of stability. The Soviets are the only ones doing okay on stability, actually. Maybe they can do some triumphs against the Americans and the British. They can force them all out of the war. So the Italian home front allows the Italians to move their units around now. And because the Germans... Mmm, crap. They have to leave that other arm. Oh, uh, you know, they can bring the air unit up from French North Africa. They don't need that there anymore. Where do they need their naval units? Holy shit. <laughs> the naval unit can go up there? No. Oh, uh, no. They could go to the Western approaches. We can't rebase the German sub. Damn. Yeah, they could they could go off the Brittany coast because they have that port, but they can't get to the Arctic Ocean. Only the subs can do that. I don't know. Is it worth? They could put it in the North Sea. They could definitely put it in the North Sea. That's an interesting concept. Or just you know what? Just put them in Benelux. 
And now, the Italian aggression can try to knock out this fleet here. Or this fleet here. Uh, actually, they don't... Mmm... Shazbot. That gives them a decent amount of options, putting it in Benelux. Because if you put it in the North Sea, they can't act. They're trapped there. They could even take the Icelandic base <laughs> if they wanted to. But yeah, we'll put it in the, you know, we'll put it in the Ruhr. And the Ruhr gives us even more options because we can go straight into the uh, into the Baltic from the Ruhr thanks to the uh, Kiel Canal rule. Okay. Um, and that is actually, uh, I think, the only things the Italians want to move around here. They move that back there. Yes, okay. The Germans get their flag into the production box. The Italians get that flag into the, the unit in the holding box. And we're done. These things are all going back in the action cup. Uh, oh, the things on the turn track come off. Germany gets a fortress about damn time, I guess. These uh, crisis markers go in the action cup. Let's do a final check on the victory points going into the 43 turn. One, two, three, four for the Soviets. That's all they have. My God, they need more. The Italians are beating them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight Italian. Re <laughs> we got the British at one. The British at one, two, and then minus one. So they are still at one. The uh, French are still at minus eight. The Germans are at plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Minus two puts them at nine. Then the uh, Americans are up two. They don't have to trace a line of supply to collect the victory points, to count them as victory points, rather. One, two, three, four, five. And they're not minus anything. So the Americans are just straight up at five. And yeah, the Japanese, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the Japanese. What does that put our totals at? Well, it puts the democracy still at minus two because all of France is captured. The Soviets are at four and the fascists are at 26. So even, you know, but when German collapses, they lose all those cubes, right? That's that's a lot of cubes for Germany to lose. That's nine cubes. And Japan's not looking too good either. Losing Manchuria and gaining Java is not a good trade-off for them. They need Manchuria back badly. The Soviets actually gained a resource this turn. They're going to be looking good for next turn. I'll see you next time. This video is already really long. Have a good one, guys. Bridger signing off. We'll see you in turn six for this crazy adventure at Cataclysm, A Second World War.